The worst years of my life, middle school, chapter 30. What's the big deal? Rafe, are you listening to me? I looked up at Mr. Dwight and nodded. You need to get your act together, young man. Keep up this kind of behavior and it's going to be more than just detention for you. Understood? I knew I couldn't talk my way out of this, so I didn't even try. Understood, I told him and got up to leave. At least my trip to the principal's office was worth 30,000 points on top of everything else I'd earned for my little wardrobe malfunction. Point wise, it had been a pretty good day, but dragon lady wise, I felt like I was already dead. After I left the office, guess who was the first person to come up to me in the hall? I'll give you a hint, it's not who you think it is and it rhymes with Beanie Balletta. What the heck was all that? Jeannie asked me. I got three detentions with Donatello, I said. That's not what I'm talking about, she said. I mean, why would you want to run around the school in your underwear? This whole rule breaking thing of yours is kind of getting stupid to tell you the truth. You're right, I told her. It is stupid. Just as stupid as some of these rules. I don't know why Jeannie was talking to me. And I don't know why, I always told her everything I was thinking. Still, she didn't walk away, so I kept going. No hats, no sunglasses, no pants that are too big or shirts that are too small. Do you really think all these rules do anything to make the school a better place? That's not up to me, she said. But that's exactly what you said in your student council speech, I told her. You said you wanted to make the school a better place, right? I do, but she stopped suddenly and looked at me like she just thought of something. That speech was two months ago. You still remember what I said? She asked. Oh man, capital double O P S. Oops. Admitting something like that to a girl who would probably go out with a lamp before she went out with me was even more embarrassing than the fact that she'd seen me running around in my underwear. And I wasn't done either. The next thing to come out of my mouth went something like this. Yeah, well, uh, you know, it's not like, you know, I just, uh, well, uh, yeah, okay, I probably need to, uh, I better go now. And then I did. Go. Right out there, right out of there into the Geek Hall of Fame. One of these days, I'm going to have a regular, not embarrassing, just be myself, don't do anything stupid conversation with Jenny Galera. But today was not the day. Chapter 31. Dinner for three at Swifty's Diner. November 2 is a good day. It's mom's birthday. And she said all she wanted this year was for us to come have dinner at Swifty's while she was working. Still, Georgia made her a drawing, whoopee, and I used most of my Zoom money to get her a card and some, some of this perfume she likes. We put the gifts out on the table so they'd be sitting there when she came to take our order. Swifties is a pretty good place to eat. I usually get the burger with double fries or sometimes the open-faced turkey sandwich with mashed potatoes and gravy. And we almost always got the apple pie with, I with ice cream and extra cinnamon for dessert. The other reason I like Swifties is that they have mum's paintings up on the wall for sale. She doesn't have too much time to paint these days since she's always working. But I think she's a really good artist, even if her stuff is kind of weird. None of mum's paintings have names. She says you're supposed to look at them and decide for yourself how they make you feel. Mostly, I just feel happy when she sells one. It doesn't happen that often, but when it does, that's a good day too. And here we've got some of the paintings that she has. Can I get it a bit closer? Just there. When she came up to the table, mum smiled at the presents we'd bought her, but I could tell right away that something was wrong. You kids can go ahead and order, she said. Bear called to say he wouldn't make it. He's got somewhere else to be. On your birthday? I asked, which I probably shouldn't have. 
Mum was trying to pretend like it didn't matter. But she's an artist, not an actress, if you know what I mean. This will be nice, just the three of us, she said. And besides, now you can get whatever you want, even the steak. Usually, we had to spend $10 or less when Bear was there, because he ate so much and Mum couldn't afford it. Talk about lame. Steak, please, I ordered. One steak, medium well with double fries, Mum said, writing it down on her pad and smiling again. How about you, Georgia Peach? Rafe was naked in school. It came out of her just like that. With Georgia, secrets are kind of like time bombs, and you never know when one is going to go off. What? Mum said. Shut up, I said. I was not. Gracie said that Miranda Piccolino said her brother said you were running all over the school like that. I wasn't naked, I yelled. Just in case you're wondering, that's not a thing. You want to yell in the middle of a crowded diner. I felt like every single eyeball in the place turned to look at me. Probably because they did. Mum was still looking at me too. She stood there, really still, like a statue. It was just a Halloween thing I said. Gracie said that Miranda said that her brother said you were ouch. That was me kicking Georgia under the table and then wham. That was Georgia making like a howler monkey and trying to look like she was crying, which she wasn't the big faker. Then the worst thing of all happened. I looked up at mum again. She hadn't moved, but this one tear rolled down her cheek. Then she turned away and walked into the back room without saying anything at all. See what you did? I told Georgia. Way to go. I'm not the one who ran around naked, she yelled. Just in case the people in the parking lot hadn't heard the first time. But I didn't even care about that anymore. I was already up and following mum. Chapter 32. Scum. Mum? I'm okay, she said. She was sitting on a big white plastic tub of dill, pic dill pickle chips in the storage room. Giant containers of everything up on the menu are kept back there. If you got stuck in that room, you'd never, ever starve. I didn't mean to make you cry, I said. Come over here, Rafe. She patted the empty pickle tub next to hers, just as Swifty stuck, out his, stuck his head in the door. Actually, his name is Fred but there was already a place called Fred's Diner on the other side of town. Jules, I don't mean to be a hard guy, but we're kind of busy out here, he said. I'll be right there, she told him. Promise. Great. Now it was Bear, Swifty and me, all giving Mum a hard time. That's not a list I wanted to be on. We never did finish our chat about Leonardo, Mum said. I want you to know that I know you've been talking to him again. I don't have to, I told her right away. I can stop. No, honey, she said. I've been thinking about this. We all talk to people who aren't there, all the time, with texting and computers and even answering machines. Artists talk to their muses for inspiration. Some people even talk to themselves. That's true, I said. Sometimes I could hear mum out in the garage when she was painting talking away even though nobody else was there. So why shouldn't you talk to Leo if you want to? She said. Besides, it's not Leo I'm worried about. It's you. I'm okay, I insisted. Are you? She looked, she asked, looking at me in that mum way. Sweetie, you've been getting in so much trouble at school lately. I just don't understand. I know it's been a tough year and I haven't been around much, but... But, and then she started crying all over again, on her birthday, because of me. I've never felt like a bigger piece of scum than I did right there. Just one big slice of loser meat on toast. So much for being a good person. We're going to cut it there and come back for chapter 31.